All right. Good afternoon. I'll call to order this hybrid work session of the Clark County Commission on Aging. It is February 15th, 2023. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to share some hybrid meeting reminders. Please keep your microphones muted when you're not speaking. And for those in the room, you need to press the button on your microphone to speak and press it again to mute. The light at the bottom of the mic turns green when unmuted and red when muted. And as a reminder, after this meeting, we're gonna be holding our annual joint meeting with the County Council uh, to make sure we're ready for their arrival. We're gonna to need to end today's work session by 4.15 if we can. So we'll keep, everyone will keep track of of time with one another, so give us plenty of, of wiggle room there. So moving forward, first on the agenda is the January 18th meeting note review. Are there any suggested changes to the work session notes? Are there any suggested changing to the regular meeting notes? I have none. Okay, wonderful, thank you. So next, we'll move on. Uh, we'll discuss our, it's, by the way, it's so much easier to see everyone's faces than try and monitor everybody on the screen. This is fantastic. Uh, next, we'll discuss our final prep for our presentation to the council. So Jenna and Susan have forwarded the slide deck to everybody. Um, we might have a few changes in there because not all of our members, I think, have been able to join us today. So we'll move forward with that. Um, I know that Megan is not going to be here, so right now I'm going to be taking her session and we'll, we'll see how that moves forward with the others. Um, and we do know that we've got, uh, so we're going to have several of the counselors in the room. Um, we're going to have counselor uh, Amedvagi, we're going to have um, counselor Young, Marshall, and I think we also have, yeah, the county manager um, Otto will be in the room, I think, with us today, perhaps. Um, and we know that Chair Bowerman will also be available with us through Zoom or through WebEx, so, so we'll be on there. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the presentation? We, we think so. Um, I think we were waiting on confirmation from Councillor Belcott, um, but we think she'll be joining online if she does join. Yeah. So everybody feels pretty comfortable with their part of the okay. presentation. Fantastic. We'll be mounting to that very soon. Very exciting. Beautiful, beautiful information here. So next on the agenda will be our subcommittee conversations. Um, first, it's time to call for uh, COA applications for the open positions. And uh, Chuck, uh, I think that you wanted to, to say a few words. I did, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so most of you probably know that I am uh, now the, becoming the public works director for the city of Ridgefield. Um, as uh, we found out with some uh, historical probing from Jenna and Susan that uh, the formative uh, documents for the Commission on Aging uh, made the um, city and county employees ineligible to be members of the Commission on Aging. So uh, I want to respect that, um, but I also want to make sure that um, I've provided enough for a transition, orderly transition. So um, I yesterday I sent my notice of resignation of the remaining year of my term to uh, council or county manager Otto, and uh, that will be effective at the end of May. So that would also allow the opportunity for the remaining year of my term to be added to the vacancies to uh, seek applications to fill and also would allow me to work with the commission and our consultant to at least get a final draft of the aging readiness plan um, ready before I step down. So um, I, it, it's been an honor to serve for five years and uh, I am um, looking forward to having things transitioned and a successful uh, adoption of our aging readiness plan update. Uh, but thank you. <laughs> Are we losing anyone else uh, this term? Well, so we do have um, this term, we do have um, 
uh, Megan and Amy are phasing off of their final years here, okay, the final two aging, terms. Aging and out. I guess <laughs> aging out, yeah. Although youngsters, <laughs> they are aging out. Okay. And we know that Tanya is also finishing her first term. So we're going to have four positions to interview for coming up. So this comes the question then, do we have any volunteers who will step forward to be on the, the committee to, uh, yeah, to interview? Yeah. yeah. We usually do about three or so. Yeah, we usually have three. Three or so. Yeah. So yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and I'm available too. Larry, wonderful. Mel and and Franklin, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Wonderful. Okay, we'll note that. So more coming for that. Um, and I think I, we're going to describe during the uh, regular meeting a little bit about that process yeah. when everything is. I think is you know when it's going to be released mm -hmm. and everything. So you'll learn more. So thank you so much yeah. for serving yeah. on that. That's wonderful. And Chuck, by the way, I want to say that your incredible work is going to be felt for many, many yeah. years here. So it's not as if you're leaving because your imprint, your wonderful imprint is on all of our works. Yes. So that's great. So thank yeah. you so much for that. He's not going very far, so we can tap it. Yeah, into Richfield's it. just up the road, right? I expect to see a, a fellow commissioner making the presentation to Ridgefield City Council of the annual report. <laughs> sometime uh, later this year, so. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, oh, and I also do want to note that with me leaving, also that position of the ATCI, ATCI liaison will open up. Um, I unfortunately committed to giving them a presentation, I think in July or August of the Aging Readiness Plan update, so that will need a transition as well. I do intend to still give the uh, presentation to the ITE International Conference in August um, as a, a member of the Transportation Geek Society, I mean Institute of Transportation Engineers of, of the Aging Readiness Plan update. I think that's very, very cool. You're going to be doing a poster session, right? Yeah, I think that's very cool and I think it could break things open for our Aging Readiness Plan in wonderful ways. Thank you. That's, that's really exciting. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. So we have volunteers. Thank you all. Uh, more to come on that. And now the Aging Readiness Plan update from the Aging, Aging Readiness Plan subcommittee. Who would like to would like to speak on that? I think I'm going to start that discussion. And then if anybody from the subcommittee wants to join, please jump in. So uh, we would like to hear if anybody has feedback from the session on January 18th. Um, and uh, how you thought the session went, if there's things you like, if there's things that you didn't like, and if you have any suggested changes or additions. Uh, as you know, the um, session um, is sorry, Can you pull that mic up just a little bit closer to it? Yeah. You bet. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so the session in Battleground in March is going to be a repeat of the session in January, so we want to uh, you know, if there's anything that uh, you'd like to see changed, we would like to do that now. So um, that's my first question, if anybody has any comments uh, on the January 18th session. I thought the, uh, the session went fairly well. I was hoping for a little bit bigger turnout. Uh, the one question I have is for uh, the March meeting, uh, how many of us can be physically there? Because I think that's really important. Yeah, and actually, will that just be an in-person or will that be a hybrid, just in-person? Yeah, it, yeah, it's just in-person. So um, anybody that turns up will, it's at Battleground City Hall. Yeah, I was wondering if, if I, I really enjoyed my conversation with some of the folks who came and, and it was really interesting to kind of try and twist the brain to think about what to write for each of those. I think that was a really great exercise to try and figure out how to answer some of those questions. I really enjoyed that because um, sometimes I would think that there were two or three things that I could write them all down if I didn't have to give one answer, which is great. But I'm wondering too, if, if for Battleground too, maybe we could think, Mel, if you'd like to say a few words at the Battleground, one being a Battleground resident, maybe you could, you know, we could talk with you about as part of our welcome, maybe could we find? 
next door to it. Yeah, yeah. So we could see. Wonderful, wonderful. I um, also wanted to encourage you all to do your networks, whether it's a neighbor, a group you're a part of, if you can encourage folks to, to attend. Um, there, there will be no work session, you know, before. You're just coming for the event. If you're willing to put carpool with someone and give them a ride there to also use your sphere to see if um, you can get a few more people there as well. This is where spheres of influence come in, right? <laughs> no, that's great. Any other comments? Any other? Yeah. So uh, other than that, I also wanted to mention that we have gotten the introductions to all of the chapters, drafts of those from our consultant Dudek, and the subcommittee is reviewing those right now and providing comments. Um, and. There will be a second review in mid-March, so uh, we will have be asking other COA members to be involved in that review of those chapters, and they'll be um, a little bit more complete. Uh, like I said, it's just the introductions right now, and uh, those the next review will have hopefully the full chapters. We're talking to Dudec uh, on Tuesday a little bit about a little more on that review so we understand exactly what it will be, but we're hoping that'll be a complete review. So, um, and we'll also have service providers looking at the chapters at that time as well. So that's uh, kind of what's coming up next. Exciting. Anybody else have any thoughts about uh, our January workshop they'd like to share before we move on? No? I'm really interested to see the lessons that we've learned from this. And I think we really did. Uh, I, I know that the feeling of the room and, and speaking with folks, I know, Franklin, you had tremendous conversations with, with some of the attendees that really affected you. So, yeah. Wonderful. Okay, well, hey, Amy. So good to see you. <laughs> okay. You're here. And that's what matters. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So great. Well, let me move on and let me first say thank you, thank you, thank you to the One Pager subcommittee and staff for this incredible COA information sheet that we have here. Um, I, I, it, it just looks marvelous and I think it just brings together so much of the work that we've been doing and, and that we're going to be doing in the future. Um, it gives a really wonderful sketch of the scope of the commission. Um, and I just wanted to see it's, it's sort of in front of everybody, if anyone wanted to make any comments on that. Yeah, I uh, make some comments. I, uh, some of you know I live at uh, Springwood uh, Landing, which is an independent uh, retirement center. And I gave a presentation to, to the uh, residents there. I had about uh, 35 that attended. I used this as a handout and talked from it and because of a variety of different reasons uh, for their understanding. Uh, first of all, it, uh, those who attended were active individuals within that center. They participate in a lot of stuff. And there's others at, at a retirement center that they're retired. <laughs> they don't want to get involved with anything else except uh, their personal lives and so forth. Uh, I was a little surprised that many of them didn't know what the commission and agent was about. Mm -hmm. They just don't have any understanding, so I had to go back and go back to 2012 and the origin, <coughs> excuse me, the origination of it. But th this handout is very useful, and I intend to go to. Uh, I was over there the other day, Touchmark and Inquiry, and, and do the same thing and offer a presentation. Uh, many of those seniors uh, would like to get out more. They're trapped because of transportation. Uh, they don't want to in, impose themselves on their family members that, that transfer them all over the place. Uh, and they would like to participate more. And uh, the only way they can participate, be involved when someone gives a presentation or something or comes in there and, and talks to them. But I plan to get uh, to go out. But I did get a lot of co comments from this. I had individuals who attended that session and said after, afterwards they would appreciate this very much. That way I didn't have to go into a PowerPoint or any of that stuff, and they didn't want to go there anyway. But this is good just to talk from it. 
because it makes a nice, interesting talking uh, paper. Uh, but uh, as I said, uh, there's interest once I finish of uh, wanting to participate much more, which made me feel good because, as I said, all those individuals want to have worth and, and value in a community and don't want to be feel like that they're sort of left out. So my hat's off, uh, both of you, you gals putting this together. It's just well done. Who, who, who did this work? Jenna, did you do it? I just formatted it. <laughs> uh, Chuck put up together a lot of the content. Yeah, good job, um, Chuck. And Franklin uh, helped revise it, so. Yeah, it's, it's well done, and I just want to congratulate those people who were involved in this. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I just, I so enjoyed reading this and seeing it, and it feels real when you have it all together in one place. So this is this is fantastic. No more fumbling for well, what is the Commission on Aging? Okay, where do I begin? So not this bad. <laughs> not not bad for an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, smile when, when you see that. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, Chuck had announced um, a little bit earlier that um, he has the new position, and because of that new position, him being a, a part of the governmental entity, he can no longer serve on the commission past May. So he's, he, he told us the sad news that at the end of May, he will be um, stepping aside from his position. So I just wanted you to know that as well. Yeah. Thank you, but it's not sad news that he got the new position. Yeah, it's very cool. Your new position is cool, you know. So, uh, okay, so let's move on then. Um, and let's touch on the uh, support letter, policy revisions. There's this wonderful marked up sheet here that um, of some of the work that we did very, very quickly. Um, I think we're gonna be able to, to sort of um, approve this today, hopefully in the next session. Um, but we recommended shortening the time needing to submit the letter from 60 days to 20 days. Um, we uh, made sure that we, we wanted to mention that anybody who's working within the commission, they need to identify any direct or indirect conflicts of interest and they would recuse themselves from voting um, on, on approving, a, a sending a letter. And a five day window for releasing the letter of support following the commission vote. Um, Franklin had questioned uh, Jenna and Susan last time whether that was enough time and they assured him that that, that wouldn't be too, hopefully too stressful. Um, and then Chuck, you had suggested that maybe we wanted to expand a little bit on our definition of who can apply for it. Yeah, so number three would be changed to be from a nonprofit organization, comma, an organization partnered with a nonprofit organization or a governmental entity. How does that sound? Does that sound as if that's a little clearer to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just add to that, it, it, it makes our commission more, I don't know what, I guess the, for me the word comes more powerful when we have a variety of different uh, folks representing the community. One of the things I did learn <laughs> Uh, doing my presentation, a lot of folks think the Commission of Aging is 55 and older. When you think about that, you can see why that, that exists out there. And then I told them we had some folks certainly younger than I am and certainly younger than 55. But there is perception out there because it's automatic. You think aging, you've got to have someone that's obviously in that category. So I think whatever we can do to overcome that so we get a variety of individuals and younger individuals, especially the younger folks involved and take ownership for the community. Yeah, thank you for that, Larry. Yeah, it'll be wonderful to see and who will be encouraged to apply for our, Amy, four open positions, four open positions that are coming up. Sadly, you're one of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now comes the time for us to move to our 2023 schedule and work plan update. And I think Susan, Jenna, I'm not sure who wanted to talk about the documentation of outreach events and perhaps meeting reminders. I believe that's me. Okay, so 
this is follow-up from the previous work session. Um, I think there was a request maybe from you, Chuck, about doing a better job clearly documenting um, sort of the other outreach things that the commission is doing. Um, so uh, Susan and I talked about it and we're thinking one of the simplest things we can do is um, on your webpage where we post your meeting materials, we can also add other outreach events to that so it's a more comprehensive documentation of what the commission is doing. So um, that's something we can start doing if that sounds good to all of you. Um, we also can, um, at a very high level, we've been putting it in the annual report, but you know, we could be more specific and really list out everything you do if that's something of interest, you know, when we do the annual reports moving forward. Um, so anyway, those were a few ideas we had to address that comment, but happy to hear feedback on that or see if that sounds okay. Hearing no feedback. I think it sounds fantastic and I think it is, um, I think it's really important to see the record of, of ways now that COVID is, well, it's still here, but but we're all getting back out into society and living with this to show that, that we're, we're particularly on the aging readiness plan, spreading all of this great information. So yeah, thank you for that. And I think it gets to our community engagement mission. Um, I know that that was our theme for 2020. Um, we struggled and we actually pivoted. So we did have community engagement with our fireside chat uh, format, but I, I like having the ability to show the community that we are engaged and we have opportunities to, to be engaged. Yeah, especially and with the new aging readiness plan, maybe some new strategies that we can let folks know about. So that'll be great. Any other thoughts from anyone before we move on? I have a, sec I have a second item under that, if that's all right. The uh, list reminders about upcoming. Oh, the reminders, yes. Thank um, you. Okay, so I think we've already touched on this, but just want to talk about the March meeting. So, so March will be, again, something different we haven't done before. So next month, instead of coming here, the meeting will be taking place at Battleground City Hall. And it is, oh gosh, I want to make sure I give you the right time. I believe it is starting at 3.30. Um, so it's a, and it's just going to be the workshop. So, um, and it's also, so it's just going to be in person. We're not doing an online component. So a bit different, different location that you need to get to. It's a 3.30 start um, and it's just a workshop. So we won't have a standard work session or, or a regular meeting on that date. Um, it's going to be a repeat of the poster activity that we did in January here in the room, um, just at a different location. So hopefully it's easier to get to for other people, people in other parts of the county um, where this may be hard to get to. Um, so maybe I'll pause there. Questions about that? What date is it? March 15th. Wednesday, March 15th. March 15th. Yes. Yep. And it'll start at 3.30. Okay. And going until? until? Until 5. Right. It will be done by 5. So the whole event will be in the daylight. So if anyone has to travel, they should be able to get get home when it's still late. Actually, March 12th is when daylight saving time starts. So. Actually, that's probably true. It'll be light. Um, what is the role of the commission in this presentation? Is, should everybody be there? Should are there specific people who are facilitating it? Yeah. So um, we'll do it like last time, where there's a very brief intro. So Cass will probably say a, a few words. Um, sounds like she might invite Mel to say a few words as someone from the area. Um, and then the consultant will give a brief, you know, this is what the project is type introduction. And then after that, um, anyone in, who attends can sort of circle around the room and provide feedback on sticky notes. 
And what we ask commission members to do is to basically spread out around the room and you can talk to people there to, you know, help get them talking and sharing some of what they're thinking um, and also just help them. If they're not quite sure what to do, you know, well, here, you can write this down and put it here. Uh, so you're sort of helping facilitate the other people providing feedback. Um, and then sort of a secondary role for commission members is um, if you have ideas that you haven't shared yet with, you know, this is a good opportunity to do that too, to make sure that those ideas are going to feed into this updated plan. I, I, I found, I'm not sure if others did, the, the folks who, who showed up were ready to work. So everyone there was very intentional in wanting to do the exercise um, if they found their way up to this room, right, to do it. So it, it was really stimulating to talk with people and to sort of work through some of their thoughts and how they should be presenting it and wording it, so. So um, question, uh, or maybe a suggestion. This will be on Battlegrounds home turf and Battlegrounds City Council meets at City Hall, um, what would you think about extending to them the invitation to welcome us to Battleground? Um, I know that last year when I presented the annual report to the Battleground City Council, it was one of the more engaging conversations that I think I've had in, in that uh, presentation format, but um, I would imagine at least offering the mayor an opportunity to to say a few introductory or welcome remarks um, or maybe extending the invitation uh, to announce this at, at Battleground City Council before the next this workshop. I think we'll, we'll find a very receptive audience. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to echo that and the mayor from Battleground may uh, invite uh, committee and board chairs uh, within Battleground and extend an invitation to at least the uh, chair to show up and all the different committees, uh, and, and uh, I think that would be excellent to get them involved. Yeah, great idea. Yeah, we, we can reach out to the city manager and yeah. uh, see what she has to say. Yeah. Any other comments, Jenna? We're pretty much... I think that's it for March, and then in April we'll be back here, and it will be a work session like this, followed by another workshop. So yeah. then that will be the end of different types of meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's, that's basically all I had to share. Wonderful, thank you. Anybody have any other questions before we move on? No? no. Yeah. I have a question. So to be clear, if we're gonna invite people, what is the purpose of this meeting? The purpose is to share feedback on strategies that are currently in the aging readiness plan. And it could be anything from how to make the strategy better or more specific to saying, I don't think this is relevant anymore, things like that. Um, and it's also an opportunity to share strategy ideas that maybe aren't in the aging readiness plan and could potentially be added. So it's basically a strategy brainstorming feedback session. and it's. It's like one of the best times for someone to share their ideas if they'd like them to be considered as part of this plan. Yeah, and people were actually starting to make connections between strategies that maybe we hadn't seen before as well. So the folks were wandering around and then they'd remember something and they'd run back and they'd put a post-it note over there or whatever. So it's, it's, it's very much of a, a work and kind of thought process. Really interesting. Anybody else? No? Okay, well let's move on then to the public comment debrief. Um, have we received any public comments, Jenna? I, I was asking Susan before the meeting. We can't remember any new ones that have come in since the last month, um, you know, other than feedback related to the, to the workshop and things like that. Well, I, I think that the, we're just doing such a fabulous job, right, that we don't. <laughs> well, I think with the outreach, too, that's going to uh, 
it, folks are going to start to maybe respond a little bit more as we go to battleground and as we're doing these conversations, which we're going to be talking about in a moment, some of the public outreach. Um, and so we'll, we'll move on to those updates then. Uh, do we have any liaison reports to share? You may. Yeah, I, uh, I just want to say that the, the position I have in the Public Health Advisory Council is a newly made position called a representative from the Commission on Aging or the aging community. So I feel compelled to tell Dr. Melnick that I will not be a member of the Commission on Aging after the month of May. And if he wants me to, to step down for some reason because I don't have a paid job in the aging community, um, I think he'll say, no, it's fine, stay. But it also occurred to me that maybe people here could, could get me questions you have or input you'd like from the Public Health Advisory Council about issues related to aging, and I could bring those. So I, I believe the policy that allowed that new position to open up says a, a member of the commission on, a representative of the commission on aging or the aging community. So that to me makes it broad enough that if you want to retain that, um, you are still a representative of the aging community. I, I think we kind of all are now, but um, but I would I would suggest that maybe. Um, before you do step down or leave the commission, that maybe the commission take a, a motion to support your ongoing uh, appointment there or decide if, if they want to have an, somebody to replace you before that. But if you're willing to, to me, because I, I, you know, um, I think if you're willing to continue that, I think you've been valuable on that uh, council. That I'm not quite as sure as you are, but. I, what I do is I, every now and then, something comes up that where I want to pipe up with, well, what about the elderly, or have you included the elderly? And then I think that's helpful. Um, when they talked about HIV prevention programs, they kept talking about adolescents, and I said, have you thought about nursing homes? And they had, and they were spending time uh, in that way. So it's an easy role. It's, I'm learning a lot. Um, I didn't know the Board of Health and it is the County Council and the, the advisory board is advisory to the public health officer who's Dr. Melnick who um, is also on the Board of Health. So it's interesting stuff. So I'm happy to do that and I really am happy to bring information to them or questions to them at any time and if, if you go to their <clears throat> their website page, it is the broadest, um, <laughs> their scope, of, their focus is just so broad. I mean, there are representatives there from teachers, nurses, uh, federally endorsed uh, Native American councils, um, police, fire, it, it's, it's interesting. So I'm going to stick it out. Thank you so much for that offer um, to sort of serve as a conduit to be able to to move back and forth on that. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Could, could I just add on to um, Amy's comment that perhaps by um, the time, so Amy's last meeting will be in May, that maybe the commission has discussed who wants to be like, if, if you're interested in maintaining a liaison role to public health and or Amy, <laughs> that, that you all, you know, at least have started the conversation on how you might do that because Amy won't necessarily be at your Commission on Aging meeting, so figuring out the mechanism to stay connected, um, that, that kind of thing. Well, I will throw my name into the into the hat for that. <laughs> so, yes, we should talk. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Any other questions or should we move on? We're doing wonderfully on time. We're going to, I think, be able to 
give ourselves a little bit of breather before giving our presentation, which is fantastic. But um, next, Franklin and I introduced ourselves to Chair Bowerman um, and County Manager Otto on January 31st. And then over the past week, we've also, Councilors Marshall and Young, met with them by WebEx or I want to say Zoom, but it's not WebEx. Um, I thought the conversations were terrific. Uh, Franklin, would you like to share some of your thoughts? Not only were the conversations good, but uh, every person had a personal story or experience mm -hmm. that they shared. And it just kind of reinforces the, the aspect that so many people are going through these kind of issues, either on the taking care of someone or being someone that might be needing care in the short term. And so I thought the, the fact that they all shared personal stories was a real engagement and connection that they're, that they're engaged and, you know, paying attention to whatever we can do to help support those issues. Yeah, and, and thematically, you know, when we were, and through our fireside chats and through our, you know, surveys and all of these sorts of things, it's, over and over again, we were hearing folks saying that it just is, it's almost as if many of the ailments or, or adjustments that one needs to make to their life as they age, they just showed up. They just happened. Um, and, and it's a surprise to many that, oh, my goodness, now I have to think about, you know, bars in my shower. And, and, and we know that this information is is available, but we don't talk about it openly. Um, and so that's been, I know, part of our theme is that how do we begin um, to let folks know that, that you do have to move back a few years maybe to, to anticipate what could be happening to either yourself or a loved one. Um, and so that you get connected with resources beforehand so that you can move a little more fluidly. And although it is very stressful, it can relieve the stress a little bit to sort of begin to set those things in your sight. And from the stories that, that were shared, there's a pretty consistent emotional component, you know, that they have to make a substantial shift in terms of how they think about that person. And um, one of the comments that the chair made was really enlightening how she said that, you know, she was going about it from a different perspective that wasn't as helpful. And so, there's always a learning process, and with that goes some kind of emotional component that comes too. Yeah, so true, so true. So I, I think that the work that we're doing, these, these stories are beginning to, um, to kind of perhaps open up spaces where we can begin to find places to talk about this a little bit more, either through our public work, our community engagement work, um, you know, with ADSWA, just ways in which we can, we can facilitate these conversations. So it, it's, it's there in front of us. It's that we just have to find creative ways to be able to move this forward. So absolutely. Um, okay, so, and, and next, so Larry and I presented to community members over the past month as well. Um, and I, with Jenna's tremendous support, spoke with the members of the Neighborhood Associations Council of our county, and that's NAC, is that how they pronounce it, NAC? Yeah. Um, and there was an enormous amount of interest in COA's Universal Green Design Idea Book, um, so much so that Jenna said, people were asking, how do I get this? And Jenna said, I have, I have a box of them, and people wanted to show up to the door, I think, right away. <laughs> <laughs> of it. So people were really beginning to talk about and process and think about how to make homes more livable for folks as they age. So that was a really, really great conversation. Um, and Larry, I know that you spoke a little bit earlier about your, your conversation with, um, with folks in your area. Maybe would you like to tell a little bit more about that? I have Larry turn on his mic. Uh, okay, for movies. Uh, a, a Man Called Odo uh, is a movie by Tom Hanks. And uh, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, and uh, you, sh you should. And uh, obviously, uh, I've gone through a little bit of trial with the loss of my wife. 
This is about a man who loses his wife and goes through some angerness uh, of not dealing with his neighbors and, and angry, calling people names and so forth. Tom Hanks does a marvelous job. It's very upsetting to a lot of folks because he, can, uh, he attempts to commit suicide four times in a movie. He's that depressed. And, and I thought about that, but I know people going through that right now. They're angry, they've lost their spouse, they've lost everything, uh, they're, they're burning their friendships, and that's so important in what the movie teaches. And I mentioned to this crowd there is to get out there and socialize and be with friends. You've got to have friends. They're your basis of life and being active and picking up and, and, and so forth. Uh, so I plug that. At the end of the movie, it did mention a crisis hotline. If you know folks going through these types of situations, they need help before it's too late. Uh, because uh, you talk about veterans in the military and, and, and so forth committing suicide. Um, suicide is pretty high with seniors as well. Uh, for a variety of different reasons, loss of a loved one, illness, sickness, and so forth, and, and so forth. And lately, uh, in the facility I, I'm in, I've seen all that. Uh, it's alive and well of what people are going through and so forth. But uh, I add that to you. It was part of my presentation of, uh, because the biggest thing is uh, tr trying to avoid the isolation and uh, the, the camaraderie of getting together and getting with people and talking with people and so forth. So that rang a bell with a lot of individuals in there that need to do that. Uh, and fortunately, uh, a lot of folks are able to go to these senior centers because they got the money. I can tell you that a lot of folks out there that are living by themselves and going through a lot of stress and strain that we're not able to reach. I think we've heard it in some of the presentations and so forth that exists out there. But getting out and telling folks, so I promote that movie. I'm trying to get that movie to be shown at, to my center. Uh, obviously, it's still in production. It's going to take another month before we can uh, pick it up. But it's an excellent movie, and it deals with issues uh, such as that. It does have a happy ending. Uh, but it's based on friendships of reaching out to one another and having people reach out to you and pull you in and that your life is important and you have uh, an opportunity to help others, which is the goal of the movie toward, toward the end. So just wanted to share that. I have a question, Larry. Yeah. Um, and first of all, thank you for your generous invitation and I hope you got our note. <laughs> but. Uh, I wanted to ask, is there any kind of formalized mental health or emotional support in, the, in your center for like, you know, those kinds of issues? Uh, some of them, uh, depending on where you go, uh, what center you go, do have that capability of a counselor in there. Uh, my particular center has a counselor that comes in uh, once a week. So there's an opportunity to, to relate with that individuals. The uh, managers of those facilities have some training in counseling. So they know how to counsel and make referrals uh, to the appropriate uh, helping organizations. So they do exist, and I think a lot of them are trying to expand that too because it is an issue. I, I think it's an issue we just don't deal with. No one likes to talk about what people are going through, the stress, the strain, and, and the angriness, and, and the resentment, and everything. It just uh, needs to be up front. And I think a lot of the uh, retirement centers, uh, talking to the managers that work at my center, there is an effort to, to broaden this out because, as we know, the senior population is growing. You know, one out of uh, four are going to be 25 uh, uh, or 65 and older. And, and that's a huge population to deal with. And they're all going through some turbulence, whether it's a loss of a loved one or loss of family members. How do they deal with that? Who do they go to? Where does the counseling come from? And so forth. So it, it's trying to get those services out in front, especially those centers. But I'm also concerned about those that live by themselves. I told you I, I deliver Meals on Wheels. And the Meals on Wheels I deliver to all single individuals. I've got one individual, 92 years old, lives by herself. And I don't know what kind of help she has or anything like that. But they're out there and you have to wonder, well, who, who takes care of them? Who, who comes in and checks on them? And, and so forth. And you ask those questions, you don't want to be real personal about it because that's just their private stuff. But at the same time, you have a concern and, and need for those individuals. So it, it's, an, it's an area we got to focus on. I just want to add something that's a little different, and that is using technology. 
I belong to a private Facebook page called Wives of Stroke Survivors. And mostly what it is is people talking to this faceless group about their frustrations. And, and I think it's a little different when you're talking about the loss of someone's personality or the loss of their ability to communicate or the loss of, of what was, but, but it looks like the people are still there. Um, people are enraged, they're furious, and there's a lot of sweet support and information that comes back to the people when they post something on this page, and I think it's very valuable. My favorite part of it is that I get to read this stuff and say, oh good, I don't have that, or that's not my situation. Mm -hmm. um, to have a spouse be there fully physically but not be able to speak is fortunately something I don't have to deal with, but I, I think it's amazing. And some people who have strokes are young. That's the other hard thing. If a wife is taking care of her husband and her little kids and he was the breadwinner, it, it gets kind of awful. Yeah, the power of connection, right, of just, of just having an, some, some kind of a network of, of folks, one or two people even, that you can share this with. Wow. Thank you for your really powerful work. Larry, yeah. Larry, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, when you go visit these people, do you make them aware of what is available for them in the community as far as networks, as far as whether people can come in and help them clean, whether they can come in and help them with uh, social or mental issues? Yeah, I, I do. When I go in, I have a stack of handouts, and then uh, the activity manager of the facility uh, Aaron, who's in my facility, she takes those handouts. They have telephone numbers, contact numbers, some, some sort. Uh, this is an actual community in motion because transportation is a big concern. We have one bus, and as I said, and these folks want to get out and help, but if they're on walkers and so forth, it makes it very difficult to go to places and help. Uh, and uh, this has a list of transportation contacts that you can have a pickup and so forth. It's setting back in, back in the back. But that has to do with the facility that you're at, right? Yeah. When you do your meals on wheels and you say yes. most of those people are on yeah. their own. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of the most important questions we ask for meals on wheels is, are you okay? And then the next thing you look at is making sure that they um, don't have any bruises on them, uh, they haven't fallen, uh, Lord help us, they haven't been abused. And, I think, and if you have to see a problem like that, you report it back uh, to the manager at the respective facility. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Amy, for sharing. Thank you for that. Uh, well, is there anything else from anyone? If not, then we will uh, adjourn the work session and begin our regular session in, what, 25 minutes or so, where we'll be giving our presentation? Are we all set? Okay, let's adjourn this meeting then. Thank you all.